All right, so we're in Troy, Michigan. We're just outside of Detroit and we're at Telly's Greenhouse. This is like a really interesting story. One of those greenhouses that have been here for probably four decades now. So we're gonna meet up with uh, some of the crew here and find out a little more of their story. Tell me a little bit about this story because you've been here for what now, four decades? Over four decades, yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> well, I, I grew up in that house over there Yeah. Um, with my parents. Was this always like a, a really busy street? Oh, no, no, no. Troy was, uh, this is back in the 70s when Troy was pretty quiet. All these uh, subdivisions and homes weren't here. They were just starting to be built. Yeah. This was just a little two lane road and you know, the, all these six lane roads were all two lane roads. and. Um, there wasn't really much retail around. There was a lady that had greenhouses here in the 50s and the 60s and the early 70s and um, she wasn't much of a retailer so she took her plants to the markets, the local yeah. markets. She died in 76. My dad bought this land in 77 and in 78 he said to my brother and I, why don't you guys grow some plants and we'll take the money and we'll buy tickets to Greece. So was that your interest point in plants? Was a, a little hanging carrot to say, oh, we'll go to Greece? Or were you interested in plants before then? Well, <laughs> the story gets longer. Um, <laughs> my, my mom and dad uh, always got Reader's Digest magazine. Yeah. And Reader's Digest sent them a book. This is in the 70s, this was popular. They sent them a book called Success with House Plants. It was it, a real thing like back in the oh, 70s, yeah. right? I have Absolutely. some really yeah. amazing 70s houseplant yes. books. And it and was yes. one of those books that they send it to you and they say, hey, if you like this book, keep it and then write us a check. And if you don't like it, you have to send it back okay. to us. That absolutely never happens anymore. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, but that's what they used to do back in the 70s. So they like sent the them, they sent the, yeah, they sent them the book and you know, I, I started reading it and I kind of got into propagation a little bit. My dad came up with this idea of growing plants over here. So I had to jump into the book a little bit heavier visited some other garden centers where every, they kind of felt sorry for me. I was a little 11 year old kid. My dad's driving me in there and they gave me like broken bags of dirt and, and Please, used- Please sir, may used, I have some plants? Yeah, yeah, used packs, used flats, a few extra seedlings that were left in some of their trays and stuff. What do you, and, now what do you do when 11 year old kids come to you? Yeah, oh, oh, oh he's, we, he's great Oh, we it. show them all the carnivorous plants yeah. and how the seeding machine works and uh, where the chocolate tree is. And yeah, yeah, yeah. they love that kind of stuff. No, yeah, We've probably know. motivated quite a few kids. Yeah. Uh, we get like these busloads of kids that come in and we yeah. do the little tour through the greenhouse for an hour um, with the teacher and I've got a whole routine, a whole song All right. and dance. So the first year uh, we, we made $1,000. So, well, that was a motivation to yeah. fix up another greenhouse. There were a whole bunch of little greenhouses here. So every year we fixed up another greenhouse, grew more plants, got ordered a few more seeds and people would come in and whatever they wanted, I, yeah. would, I would try to grow it for them yeah. for the next year. And I, I can okay. remember so many cases where people would come in and say, do you have this blah, blah, blah? I'm like, I don't even know what that is. But then the <laughs> next year they'd walk in yeah. and I'd say, hey, remember you asked me for that? Uh, yeah. That's like the cornerstone mm -hmm. of his business, yeah. I think. Yeah, it's, it's like, what do people want? I'm gonna get that for them. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but it takes time. Like, are, do people have that kind of patience? Because sometimes people nowadays, when they have, oh, they yeah. want a plant, they oh. want it now. Oh yeah, you know? yeah. Well, back then it was a little bit different. Yeah. And they would ask for something really obscure that they didn't think they'd find that maybe they saw at a botanical garden. Right. And the next year I'd be like, hey, remember that plant you wanted? Yeah, that's it's cool. right over here. I'm like, yeah. oh my God, you remember. <laughs> well, I'd love to do a, a tour, but one more quick question. I'd love to know, since your parents are still here and uh, what, what do they think about it? Do they laugh? Do they laugh about how they got you started down this path or well, what's the? My dad, uh, was always in the restaurant business, so yeah. he's used to like the seven hour, seven days a week and Very the long strong hours. Yeah, yeah, work all, ethic. He, yeah, really strong work ethic. So he's, you know, all about getting everything done and staying on top of the business. Um, he kind of. Like, why are you open only 360? Yeah. No. 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 He's like, why are you going to that soccer game? <laughs> or, or why? We're you know we're actually going to Greece t tomorrow. On our honeymoon. Uh, yeah. 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 Kind of like a second honeymoon, and he's yeah. like do you really need to take a second honeymoon or whatever? <laughs> you know, you should be on, on top of the business. That's great. It's like a family affair and oh, a community sure. affair because it seems like you have folks who have been working with you and their families work for you. Yeah. So it's, it's really well knitted into yeah. this area. His cousin has worked with him for how many years? Oh yeah, Roughly? 20 some. And then yeah. Felipe, Carmela, their family, 20 some years. Um, my Rose Lady has been here forever. Uh, Amazing. Yeah, so. Well, let's go take a little tour. I mean, yeah. obviously it's uh, seasonal. You have a lot of the, the squash yeah. oh. and gourds. Yeah. 
I, tr I turn on the heat heater for the first time. Um, oh, it is getting a little, it's getting a little chilly now. Yeah. I'm not gonna be taking any plants home, but I'm always plant shopping in my yeah. mind. Oh. Both now outdoors as well as indoors. Yeah, so right. <laughs> I see you have a lot of your popular aroids up front and yeah, everything along yeah. those lines. A little see the Sansevieria. It's one of my favorites. These are gorgeous. Look how pretty yeah. Cleopatra. Yeah. I love that one. Yeah. It's like hand painted by yeah. God. <laughs> I haven't seen these since I was in the UK. Actually, oh, golden these, dragon, golden, golden crocodile. Yeah. yeah. Do you know? Mm, or mame. Yeah, that one. Okay. Mame. Yeah, see, you got some, you got some interesting yeah. ones that there's, people must come in for. There's a lot. How has this evolved over the course of those years? Because it seems like there was a big houseplant trend in the 70s. It yeah. probably waned a bit. How did this ebb and flow? Oh, there, there was a time when we hardly carried any houseplants. Really? Oh, yeah. absolutely. Isn't so that crazy? Oh, yeah. 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 I'd say just in the last uh when we started years. dating, yeah. especially, is when it really picked up. That's when there was like a fervor. Like yes. I, at the time, it was Raphidophora tetrasperma. Yeah. yeah. Like everybody yeah. wanted that plant, and so. I always think it's like the new '70s. Like to yeah. see it's the same well, thing all over think, again. Like you, it's so hard because when you're running this over that course of many decades, what yeah. is this? That's the Stefania or Stefania subarosa. Subarosa. Oh, is this an epipremnum? Yep. Yeah. Panatum variegata. Wow. Yep. That's Elbow. The, the fun little uh, jewel orchid. Oh, yes. Actually, you know what? I just discovered that in New York we have a native jewel orchid. Oh. Oh, wow. Yeah, that I typically was growing indoors and I didn't realize that it's also an outdoor wow. plant in uh, New York. So that's cool. I, what's really lovely is like discovering kind of these like indoor outdoor ones or yeah. even if they're in the same that's genus gorgeous. or whatever. One of the um, alocaceous. Yeah. This seems that pretty means, thick, I know. you know? Oh, it's yeah. a nice hearty. Well, it, feel that, yeah. that feels like plastic. Yeah. Have you, like Maharani? Yeah, yeah. Maharani's yeah. like that really too. Popular. Yeah. yeah. And we first saw these two years ago in like Singapore. Singapore. Oh, in no, Singapore? Singapore. Yeah, oh. Thailand. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's where they all, a lot of yeah. this stuff comes from. So this is kind of like a rare-ish table. And We've then, got a, you really honestly have a really nice selection. Cool. This is, this is the, this, that's, that's the crazier stuff. We have an, or, uh, I call Monstera that the, the high rent or, district. at home. Oh my we gosh. thought about bringing it in. I've you've ever seen one, but that's, this that's. The, this is the high rent. Yeah, yeah. I call it the high rent district. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is what it is at this stage. Right. That's, here's a thematophyllum that we've had forever. Oh my gosh. That was, there, the other half of it is at the back of the greenhouse. We, George I divided it. A, a yeah. customer gave me a, a big plant they didn't want, and I uh, literally took a reciprocating saw to it and chopped it up into pieces, and every one of them took. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah, so. And they're just so massive. Like, when I ask George, I'm always bringing plants home. Yeah. I try and temper that, but it's, um, it's a problem. And I asked George one day, like, if there's one plant you could bring home, yeah. like what, and he said one of those. But, but then you'd have to have a whole It's room. so <laughs> big, we can't even yeah. fit, so we just admire it here yeah. and yeah. enjoy it. it a, do you know if it's a thematophyllum by Pinnitus? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I mean, nobody can fit it in their house. No. So they just sit here, but no. they're cool. Yeah. I, I love them. It's, I, I mean, love the leaf. Would you sell it, though? Would oh, you, yeah. You, yeah, you it's, would? It's got a price on it, okay. and it's actually inexpensive. <laughs> Really compared yeah. to the size, you mean? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's inexpensive. We have oh, different. The leaves are incredible. Yeah. yeah. Look at the new leaves on these. Oh, look at new leaf. I think these are beautiful. Oh wow. These are incredible. Aren't they nice? Yeah. And like the Standeliana. There are just so many that are. We have some Amedrians here. Oh, this is one of the best leaves. Aslanii. I don't know if you can see on camera, but. Oh yeah. With it's the just yeah the. Huge 
you. What's the underside look like? It's Purple. like purpley. Yeah. Isn't that pretty? It's really pretty. But you look like you wax your plants. I yeah. know. Like Isn't it impressive? You know, <laughs> you know, one of your biggest fans is, is Brennan. And he, one of our um, employees. And he heard you were, he, you know, coming. Uh, and he was like, there, I'm going to make everything shine. He asked if he could come so. into work early. If, uh, he, he'll be in. He, he made sure everything here looked I mean, really. He must have. He must have done a high polished sheen on all. Yeah, I don't no. know when he did it. I don't know how he did it. He's but they, great. One of George's newer employees, and he's just a great addition. I mean, who would not want to work here? I know. Like, it's just incredible. Yeah. That's the medium. Medium. Sometimes they call that Spider-Man monster. I've heard it called. I was not expecting such a wonderful selection, but. I guess you produce in the, when somebody says, hey, I'm interested in this. That's, That's exactly, yeah. yeah. I've got a mental list all the time of things that uh, people are I've waiting never for. I've heard of this one, but it looks very similar to mine. But this is... It's uh, an anthurium, right? Um, yeah. Ooh. Habamba? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. No, it's like Kookabamba or yeah. something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I've never even heard of that one. I mean, this look, looks like my anthurium polystichum which has uh, very fingers yeah, like yeah. that, yeah. And then we have that, can't remember what that one's oh, called, but yeah, it's another fingery one. You have to see this. an all white leaf that's been here now for three weeks oh, it's wow. not yeah, it's like I up. can't believe how down. long it's lasting princess philodendron Dendron. yeah white princess wow. but this I mean usually you know this one went by the wayside but I mean it's been weeks I keep expecting it it's I love that leaf it's so pretty here's some syndapsis uh, trubii dark form. dark form so much in such a little tight area. We haven't even gone outside. Nope. At a tapoensi. Yeah, a tabo poensi with it. the little red bottoms. Yes. These are great. This one's, I have this one at home and it's snaking around. It should oh, definitely it's be. It's beautiful. I love like the gray sheen yeah. to it. Oh, and this is a tortum, isn't it? Yep. These are beautiful. I love when these unfurl. I am no, the same thing. It's yeah, so there's, cool. There's no new leaf unfurling, but these are really incredible when they're unfurling. Oh, we have one Florida Beauty, which like the price of these is increased exponentially. Everything has social, changed. Social media, media yeah, you know? social media See? pressure. Oh, fat boy, I love that one. Is Martianum? this a Mar Martianum? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I have that one at home. It like grows beautifully. I've never seen the cultivar named Fat Boy. That's yeah. so funny. That's, that's <laughs> how like they had it nicknamed at a place we saw it in, in uh, Florida. Syngonium. Syngonium yeah. uh, strawberry ice. ice. We have a whole table, table of syngonium. Of syngonium. Mm -hmm. Like three kings, we have a lot of really good syngonium. Mm -hmm. Variegated easy. Yeah. Wow. Oh, and then Hoya. We have like tables yeah, of Hoya. Oh, wow. Yeah. And your Hoyas are really like substantial because oftentimes, you know, you'd They're see tiny. just like a node yeah, or whatever, but you, oh, you've, right. you've, you've, you've built them out. What are some of your favorites? Anything here? I, Australis Lisa, I think, is one of the most beautiful leaves. I, I love to see pink in a leaf. Pink in a leaf? All yeah. the new growth has yeah. pink. Anything with that's pink That's a gorgeous in a leaf. leaf. Callistophylla is really nice. And your Hoya carry eyes are quite large, yeah. too. It's, it's, it's nice. It's nice to see because with the Hoya craze, it's often you're just getting a node or two. Yeah. And it may or may not have a leaf. I got, <laughs> right? I, I, I got these from a guy that lives a mile away. Oh my God. Yeah. They're There's incredible. Clistophyla. That's beautiful with the, oh, yeah. 
the contrasting venation. That was the first Hoya that I saw a few years ago that I was like, wow, that's, that's a cool leaf. Yeah. Like that sort of started. Have you been around for any of the blooming here? We've only had one. We had a Carnosa on a totem bloom and that was, and someone had asked me that and I said, no, I've never seen one bloom. And a customer was like, you've got one back yeah. there blooming. <laughs> That was the one and only one that I ever saw, but I have lots of customers that come in and say that their Hoyas are blooming. Yeah. Our totems aren't even here. That's Matilda, right? Yeah, the Matilda. I haven't seen a Matilda this right. developed. Substantial. Yeah. yeah, usually we have another little, maybe they're all gone. We had little pots of it too. I think I just got this one. That, I can never remember the name of it. Oh no, this is very Bertonia. similar to one, Bertonia, yeah. I'm wondering if mine was mis... Uh, mislabeled? Mislabeled. Well, there's a, which one do you have, like Sangi Eye? Sangi Eye. So, yeah. some of them are related, like yeah. you get one that's across between two others, yeah. so they sort of... You won't know super until... Silver. Oh yeah, yeah, the Super Silver. Yeah, pretty bad. Okay. You won't know until they bloom, really, you know? And that's, when I first went to, like, I went to search something about a uh, Hoya to figure out which one we had. And when you go online, all you see are the blooms. And at yeah. the time I was like, these bloom? Like I didn't even know because <laughs> the leaves are so cool. I didn't even care about the blooming. Yeah. Well, most people come for the leaves, right. right? They like the silver splashes. They like the variegation. They like the, the patterning on the leaves. Is oh, is that a macrophylla? Yes. And look at the white creamy leaves on that too. Yeah. Cartesii, is it? Yeah. yeah. And another great selection of that. Clarodendrons are oh. blooming like crazy. Yeah. Isn't that a cool flower? Yeah. I'm glad I still have some. The leaves alone are spectacular on that. I remember commenting on it, and George was like, wait till you see the flower. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then your Hoya Retusa, I mean, also has some, some yeah. grass growing in it. <laughs> right? And, and that's free. <laughs> <laughs> the grass is free. <laughs> Appropriate for the grass-leaved Hoya, though. <laughs> They're so full. It's, it's unbelievable. So that table's awesome. Lots of Yeah. Pink splash. I mean, up, look at the, the They're elbow. starting to get their, like, finger, the finger-like oh, yeah. yeah. growth yes. on that. See this? They're starting to get, like, this one has, al this one almost has five leaves already. Five oh, leaflets. What, what does that mean? It's starting to get more mature. So these are like the, the less mature leaves, the juvenile form. And as they start to get these like leaflets or five leaflets, that's when they're starting to get more mature. So you don't see this one too often. Oh, erythrophyllum. That's kind of cool, isn't it? Yeah, or they call it red arrow. Antonium erythrophyllum, yeah. That's Gorgeous. a pretty, pretty one. Um, this one's pretty unique. Oh yeah. That's ice frost. Wow. Ice frost, yeah. This is one of my favorites, the... It's like stippled. Magic Marble or Three Kings. Ooh. If you can see, the leaves on that are spectacular. Oh. Yeah, it just looks like a light spray paint on top, yeah. like a little white spray and paint. The... Potophyllum Aria. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah. Batik, that's another... Pro the Syngoniums, that's like my newest craze, because <laughs> I the, there's so many spectacular leaves. Yeah. Uh, this one's called Christmas. And then you even have these really small leaved varieties. Yeah. Syngonium green, tiny little leaves. The terrarium people love those. Oh, imagine, yeah. yeah. Well, and we saw them in little two inch pots too. Oh yeah. And so, so a lot of the plants that we have throughout the greenhouse, like We'll have philodendrons in that section, but we also have a whole like fairy garden slash terrarium section over yeah. there in little two-inch that, pots. That's, that's another trend that we played really hard with. Yeah. Uh, 
the last 10 years or so, fairy, fairy garden gardening. workshops and yeah. all the little trinkets and the plants that go with them. Do people still one? call it fairy? I mean, I know people still call it fairy gardening, but I, gardening? yeah, I kind of feel like, is it, is it like, you still know, call it fairy gardening. okay. The, the grandmas. The yeah. Grandmas yeah. <laughs> I kind of think like there needs to be a fairy garden revival, but like in the Gen Z millennial right. generation, right. but not called fairy gardening, what would you, you know? Call it? You call it bonsai. Oh, bonsai. That's yeah. that's been really really but hot for us. Like people have transitioned over into polydariums and vivariums and things like that oh, as yeah. well. So. Yeah. Vivarium. I've yeah. never even heard that yeah. term. No, I yeah, like that's that. been big all for all the people yeah. with the dart frogs and stuff. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Shrimps and yeah. you know that's kind of stuff. Yeah. This is probably one of the best syngonium collections I've seen. I mean, I haven't been out like shopping for houseplants in a little while, right. but like. But honestly, it's like one of the better Syngonium collections Have that you? I've seen. People love how joy. Yeah. Yep. Seabus <clears throat> that sort of are starting to fenestrate. Yeah. I mean, look at this too. Yeah, that's, you don't see that. Implicimums. No, yeah. I, I never see. I the last time I saw this was in again Singapore in a yeah. house tour. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And they, and they're very sizable. I mean, this is. That's another. You uh, know, panatum. Yeah, yeah. panatum, but they it, it's just billed as green. Yeah. Because it didn't have like some of them have slight variegation. Yeah. But I think I mean it's such a pretty plant and it fenestrates so beautifully the right. more it matures. We call them exotica here. Syndapsis pictus exotica yeah. in Florida. I think they call this silver cloud or silver. They have different names. It's so hard because the cultivars sometimes are just so nuanced right, that yeah, you're like, right. oh, this one has a little, little bit, bit more exactly. silver around the veination yep. and I'm yep. gonna name Loop it something else. Yeah. Or Jureus or whatever, <laughs> but is that a silver and? Because it's got a little tiny yeah. tip, <laughs> you know? Oh, and pottery. We haven't even talked about like, that's one of my favorite things here. And that's, that's one of the, well, that's our excuses fun. to travel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, is to like really match your plant with your yeah. pot. Right. I also like to see, I don't know if you do this, but sometimes you get local folks who do pottery and then yeah. you have something oh, that yeah. feels very local as well, yeah. which you I think it. is yeah, kind of interesting. Uh, and then your prayer plant yeah. section over here. Again, a really wonderful selection. Everything looking so good. <laughs> I love that. I mean, some of these, is this the Freddy? No, this one's called Calathea Exotica. There's one that looks like, it looks called a lot Freddy. Like Freddy. Yeah. Show him, the, show both, yeah, show some of the one that we're uh, propagating. Okay. Freddy has, I see. Okay, so Freddy. I'm glad you do, because I don't. Okay, <laughs> I see it in the, I see it in the drip tips. You see this, yeah. the drip tip? Oh. So these are all different? This, this is, those two are oh, these. different. And I see, the difference is, oh, can you hold these? Yeah, for me. So I see the difference in the drip tip right here. So these drip tips kind of come in and then go out like this. And then Freddy's is more like, it doesn't have that kind of, it doesn't pucker in. Yeah. And then also this coloration seems to be a little different where Freddy tapers off here. Right. And then this one comes all the way to the edge. Yeah. It's and does so this have nuanced. wavy, wavy leaves? It looks side? like this one has a little slightly wavy. Yeah, Maybe. it does look like that. Yeah. This is a, this is a little baby. Oh, that looks a, like a, a roof of barba. It is. Jan's favorite. It's yeah. called bluegrass, right? Bluegrass. Yeah. We have and, like the mom plant at home. That's yeah. like the hazard of being married so, to someone who owns a greenhouse. Yeah. It's a plant that yeah. looks really good. He yeah. like chops it up. Uh, yeah. So yeah. half of it so now it's, is it's here. See how hairy it is on the bottom of the leaf. So she loves carrying it around. And have you ever seen these flower? No. They get yellow flowers right around the base. Yeah. A big Aww. kind of nice fluffy I yellow just flowers. Like tactile -y. it's yeah. awesome. Brazil, okay, so when I first started working here, I walked into the greenhouse and I saw a Brazil. Yeah. 
And at the time, the tetrasperma was really popular. Yeah. And I was like, why isn't this the most expensive plant you have? <laughs> yeah. And he was like, nothing makes sense anymore. Yeah. Like, so I'm like new to the scene. So for me, like my house is primarily filled with like the more pedestrian, yeah. like I don't care if it's expensive I, or not, I go by. I think you should just have it like as seasonal trends. So you're like, this is popular now. Right. This was so last season. Right, this right. was so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you like know. When, I, when we first started dating, Pilea peperomioides yeah, was like the yeah. thing. Yeah. And now it's, you know, not anymore. This yeah. is a beautiful one too, the lemon lime. It's sort of, it's got a trailing habit, but not in a heart leaf, which is yeah. a really cool thing. I have mine kind of trailing up, but it tends to want to go up. done yourself with like you know sourcing and you know a lot of folks will bring things in and then it's it's not even hardened off like yours are oh, substantial yeah. plants that yeah, I right. feel like oh I could go home with that right. and it would actually do well you know yeah. there's allocations there's, and collocations of it This is the other monster it's, one. Wow, un incredible. Oh, beautiful. Isn't she pretty? And then this is, uh, this is where we put some stuff that's uh, not ready to sell yet. And this is our way of kind of keeping people out of it. Yeah, are these some of your mother plants too? Because this yeah, looks like- Well, that's a mother plant. Are in the cage but over that there. Is a, but this one is a mother plant, obviously. Yeah, that is a, yeah. It's amazing. Look at the beware of dog sign. Can we go please yeah, get that? that? Tongue in cheek. <laughs> That's so good. You recognize the popcorn plant over there, right? Because you used to be that plant over there. You know that one that smells like popcorn? Do you know that plant? No. Uh -oh. oh, it's oh, pretty boy. cool. Does the, do the leaves smell like popcorn or do you have to have? No, the leaves definitely smell like popcorn. When you say a popcorn plant, I'm thinking Spirobolus heterolepsis, but no, I don't know. Touch that and smell it. Is it? Oh my God! That smells know, exactly like says. popcorn. Like, oh, in the movie Buttered theater. popcorn. Yeah, yeah. Is this in the Fabaceae family? Is I, it like I, a? I have no idea, but it produces a, a bicolored, yellow, like yellow and brown. Is uh, it a nitrogen fixer? Flower. Do you know? It looks like one, doesn't it? Looks it? Like that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's in the Fabaceae family. Yeah, maybe it is. But it became Ill illegal to import the cuttings from overseas two years ago. Why? So I I don't know, they thought something was coming over on it. Okay. So so we had to get a stock plant. S Sandra, you have to smell this. It smells exactly like I, buttered popcorn. I already smelled it from yeah. just walking by. Oh my gosh, that, that is insane. So that's the mommy plant that we made a few hundred cuttings out of for, for the spring, of that's course. That's incredible. Is and like even that, even that, uh, no, 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 it's okay. not. The flower is pretty spectacular too, but that yeah. people walk by it and they're like, oh, you know, it's just a big, ugly green weed, but yeah. uh, then you smell it. and. I bet I bet it's a nitrogen fixer and everything, and it probably is hardy somewhere in this in the states. I want to definitely see your begonias. I'm still not good at begonia names and cultivars, but this one's beautiful, Morocco. We well, you can see we cut it back, right? And we're thinking this winter that'll get big and fat, and somebody will put it in a beautiful pot yeah. in the corner of the living room. So all all these were cut. Well, some were cut back a while ago. Some just got cut back recently. This one looks like the the Don Miller one. Oh, no. Yeah, you know, that's a begonia frosty angel wing. Oh. I think there's a begonia frosty, but it, 
it was called Don Miller after this really, you know, acclaimed begonia guy. Uh -huh. But nobody liked the name Don Miller, so they uh -huh. <laughs> named it back Rossi. Uh -huh. <laughs> I know. <laughs> The first time we were at a botanical garden in Chicago, like early on, and it was when I didn't know anything about plants at all. And every time I saw something I loved, I'd say, what is that? And George would say, it's a begonia. And then oh, yeah. we'd move on to another plant and I'd say, that's amazing, what is it? That's a begonia, like everything <laughs> it's was- about a, the begonias that you liked. The leaves the were leaves, spectacular. Yeah. I think I'm more of a foliage person, yeah. so. And then the ace, asymmetry. Yeah. Yeah, just the, Swirl, and even and like the- swirls the, on some yeah. of them. The prehistoric <clears throat> like look of yeah. some of them, I don't know. I think I think begonias are going to get a little bit big the next few years. I, from I, what I'm seeing. I hope so. You know, I think that, I think I um, initially when I was attracted to begonias, it was the more succulent begonias oh, yeah. or the caudiciforms. Mm -hmm. I thought I thought those were kind of really unique and interesting. Her and, suit leaves and stuff and, like that. And, um, and wait, wait till you see some of the stuff that's coming out just in bedding mm -hmm. plants with all the boliviensis types that mm -hmm. they have now. Full sun tolerance. Wow. Loaded oh, with yeah. flowers, we, we've been seeing oh, them at the trial gorgeous. gardens all yeah. over the place. Yeah, so. so more begonia bedding plants, and that yeah. might kind well, of no, and, trickle in. And these, yeah. and these both, I think are, yeah. they, it's it's our number one or number two genus. Interesting. Yeah. Close to impatience, believe it or not. I also think because people um, are attracted to, like, there's a lot of pink begonia leaves, yeah. pinks and reds, yeah. and like mm -hmm. that's kind of a popular trend right. as well. And like the polka dots and things right, along yeah. stripes. Yeah, Maculatas, when you yeah. first walked in, that was the first yeah. thing that, we have that up there. eyelash begonia has been yeah. popular for the mom. I think, yeah, we, we walked by the mommy plant somewhere. Look at that leaf, look at the colors yeah. coming through it. And it's a super easy house plant to grow and it doesn't get out of control. Yeah. Which is so weird. You don't, you know, you don't realize it's so varied. He always calls them gas station begonias, like the. the oh yeah, the wax leaf begonias. Yeah, so, just the ones so, that you. And even those have beauty in their own way. We built a new greenhouse across the ways, and we thought we were going to keep all the stock plants yeah. there, so we had to build a cage <laughs> over there. But then we're like, it's way over there. We, no one's watering it. We yeah. can't control the temperature, oh. so we brought everything over here. There's wow. another macula. We just finished yeah. this cage. Oh, and there's the mother. Yeah, the oh, they, yeah, the yeah. It's so full. And then what a beauty. The, the goofy um, syngoniums yeah. and anthuriums. And, and then this one looks like a variegated. That's, that's that, a variegated that dragon is. scale. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Which is look at look at, look at the underside, yeah. yeah. That's kind of a big deal. That's kind of a big deal. Kind of a big deal. And this too, the variegated Adansonii. We took a cutting, so yeah. there's not much to it now, but still. And we sun we sunburned it too a little bit. We finally got our hands on a little pictum tricolor. Oh my goodness. We haven't. We like looked high and low you and know, high I and low. I have to tell you, I, I think I got that plant and I, I might have been the first person to put it on YouTube. Oh, it's your fault. It was. <laughs> and I got it when it was only $39. Oh my wow. gosh. You did that. I Did, did you that have one? Oh yeah, but you know this, the crazy thing is, mine had now like, I started with like a little, you know, stem and two leaves or whatever. And now it's up to 11 leaves. Wow. But she I, it. you know, but I've I, never seen one that but big. I forgot to, I have it in a terrarium, because when I travel now, and I forgot to put the terrarium top on. When I got, got home, it was down to four leaves. Oh. So I put it, I put the thing back on and it came, it's gonna, That's it's very, good. I had it down to a point where um, it, it flowered and I usually cut off the flowers now and it lost um, both of its leaves when it flowered the first time. Cause it was, when I got it, it was like small and not really settled into its mm -hmm. container very much. And, um, it popped right back. Uh -huh. So you just have to be patient with it. It's a very right. slow grower yeah, for we've me. Seen that. We have a new leaf though. That's kind of cool. Yeah. I mean, we just got it, what, yeah. a month ago or something? Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry too, because I can't ever get a second one right. now. It's right. just too, it's too expensive for me. Yep. Monstera subpinata. That's nice. Um, oh, this is, um, an Adansonii, a mint Adansonii. Oh, yeah. If yeah. mint is, if it's real, that's yeah, that's no, that. I feel like it's a good, it has 
another layer of chlorophyll on yeah. top so it makes it look a minty green, yeah. yeah. So a lot of this is in propagation somewhere else. I kind of like that leaf. Yeah, what is this? It looks like a, almost looks like a, Relaxia. oh, this is a type of orchid. It yeah. is? Mm-hmm. I have uh, one of these at home, but it's opposite. It's dark green here and it's silver oh, in, the, in the center. Awesome. Is it still called it, a Plexia? Yeah, and it's, um, to my knowledge, it is. And it bloomed for me this year, actually. Oh, what is yeah. A little white flower? flower like. A little whitish pink, oh. yeah. That's a nice looking epipremnum pinnatum, like a sort of a mature leaf on that, yeah. I, I think, uh, no label on this. That looks like a dubia or, yeah. yeah. And then here's your pink princess corner. Yeah. And in this corner, the pink princess yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with the epipren and pinnatum, bear got him. <laughs> a big Jose she, Bono. Yeah. We, that we just took cuttings from. Yeah, we from. just took a bunch wow. of them. Wow. And these are all in propagation over there, so you can see what they look like when they're growing. And these Haworthia are pretty popular now, the fancy ones from yeah. overseas. Yeah, we saw a lot of the, these are succulents and hybridization succulents in Thailand were really popular, mm -hmm. like these kind of truncata ones. And I guess they try to choose for this like kind of pinkish purplish mm -hmm. color as yeah. well. They, they, I had to choose from like 200 different varieties. Oh my I, God. You know, I had to and Google so every, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so all those different ones down there. Wow. President of the Brunelia Society potted all these up for me. That's incredible. Yeah. How is your um, your succulents? Are, are, is there like a succulent trend? Are people into it? It's, like it's still strong, but I don't yeah. see it growing. Okay. It, I, I think they're. Um, You've I think seen they, the, plants, yeah. isn't that great? I think I they love want. That. They want. Um, I think they want to see some things that are different. Well, yeah. you, like the stapelia and the giant yeah. stapelia in bloom. Yeah, and, euphorbias. You know, the, that type of euphorbia has been popular lately. We have ghosts over there. Ghosts I've seen around. I haven't seen this uh, variegation. Isn't it pretty? Yeah. yeah. My favorite are the ones that are like part variegated, mm -hmm. part solid. Mm -hmm. They remind me of like court jesters or something <laughs> with the... They do kind of have that like, yeah. yeah. I mean, and look at this sedum. I mean, how long has this been growing here? 15 For, years? Yeah, years. Maybe longer. <laughs> it's incredible. Look at, look at this. And, uh, and also the Pseudorypsalis is, yeah, oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's flowering. This one has berries seeds, on it. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. Hmm. Keep forgetting that one. Isn't that cool? <laughs> Which I just learned is a member of the Bromeliad family. Yes. I didn't know that. Just like pineapples. Just, yeah, pine he said something about pineapples. I was like, Wait, do, should we go into go on propagation? Yeah, propagation? I guess oh, this yeah. way. We got distracted. <laughs> we got distracted by the plants. So th this is propagation. This is uh, one of the first things we did after we built this greenhouse. And th there were actually 12 tables at the time. Um, and then we started uh, buying in s more seedlings. So mm -hmm. I, I don't sow as many seeds as I used mm -hmm. to. So it's. 90 some percent of what this is used for is vegetatively propagated. Wow. Yep, uh, these are perennials for next year, hmm. uh, ground cover for next year, mm -hmm. and then you see all the tropicals that are rooting back there. Yeah. And, well, and in the front here too. I mean, how do you keep, keep track. inventory and track and know what? My, my laptop spreadsheets. Yeah. yeah, and then you could just see year over year like what, yeah. what's what been popular yeah. and then you could try to, to. I have access to the server so yeah. I can see, well, how many of this perennial or this begonia right. or this whatever did we sell? And then yeah. my deadline for having all those orders for unrooted cuttings is coming up here in just another week or so. Wow. So, But the perennials, these are all perennials. They come you know, in little bags of 100 unrooted from yeah. all over the world. Yeah. And this is just the very, very beginning. But these will accumulate the next um, 
month, month and a half. Mm -hmm. And then we take them all to the Shelby store and then there they get transplanted in their final container and that's where they get overwintered. And that's where you have a little bit more space. So, because yes. yeah. you're always just so space restricted. And when you're, yep. it's not like you just concentrate on succulents or no. you know perennials or annuals, yeah. you you do a range. Yeah, and so you always well. have to pick and choose. Like what happens like this last, with the pandemic and everything you got, everybody became interested in gardening all yeah. of a sudden millions and house and plants. And, and so how do you, yeah. how do you, how did you expand or not expand? Well, we did, um, we did add about an acre of greenhouses at the other facility. Okay. Really, really nice production space with, you know, the, the shade system and uh, concrete floors and good irrigation. So, um, so we've upped, upped our numbers a little bit. Okay. Yeah, we learned uh, a year and a half ago that we had to get every plant we could get our hands on yeah. um, on the bench yeah. for the fervor that yeah. occurred. Yeah. So, really? so there's a few more little stock plants here that are growing. I don't know yeah. what's really exciting here, but oh, this is a, you recognize that? This looks like uh, the curry. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah. This one is the Maria Kung Kungiai or something. Yeah, it's uh, a it, yeah. I don't know why it's here. It's there, a curry plant. All the plant. rest of them are out there in the um, on the bench in the herb area. That's a Pinata Partita, the Monstera. It looks like a Peru, but it fenestrates. Incredible. And those are those those different uh, calatheas. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah Rufobarbas. The, the yellow flower, that'd be very cool. These are all here because they're supposed to be yeah. propagated, but. There's okay. a Godzilla, have you seen that one? No, why is, it even, why is it even called Godzilla? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Cause it's the memorable. resemblance, I don't, I'm not sure. <laughs> Remember I said we sunburned it a yeah. little bit? <laughs> yeah. But you have that? in a few weeks when it's rooted, it'll be nice. He's like, give me that back. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put it right back where I found it. <laughs> oh, here's a yellow variegated Standeliana. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. The Aria. Nice. Oh. I love the, uh, the petioles on this. And then are these variegated or are they just pale? The, I've the never gotten this. Easy. Oh yeah, that's a good looking one. Mine went totally yellow. Oh. I had a raven that went totally yellow. Oh. Like on one thing, really? twice. And I tried to take cuttings of oh. just yellow. It yeah. did not work. Oh. Did you ever try that? No. Of just the leaflet of a yellow leaflet? No. And it, I had now no success, no success. <laughs> there are some, oh. Uh, the ravens easily we yeah yeah the the ravens were easy green yeah. easy but when, it's slow. Slow. when it's full yellow yeah. did not work for me oh. so i'm curious if anybody else is a little baby totem growing oh look at the totem <laughs> still not there's not one unraveling and then are these some of the ones that you had just recently done yeah. cuttings yeah. okay yeah. so these are um heat and mist bench yes yeah. i turned off the mist oh let's go see your bonsais yeah. Yeah. A nursery closed in Florida, and yeah. they, they sent me all their bonsai. Really? The big giant ones. Wow. Oh, they're, yeah. They're in the... Um, in the greenhouse. In the greenhouse the on way. the north side. Um, so this is where the bonsai people were... This is plants that we overwinter for people. Oh, okay. So you actually you actually provide a service for people to... They're over on vacation for okay. a month, and so they brought them here, and we charge them by the inch. Okay. Um, and this is all stuff that's in the works. Yeah. This is where they do, a lot of times they'll sit down right, the bonsai guy sits there and then the customer sits here and they do all the work right here. Amazing. Um, there's a, I've got two bonsai guys that work out of this area. Yeah. We make our own soil over there. That's, that's my, the seeding machine over there. I, have you ever seen one of those work? Oh. A, a Blackmore seeder? This is, so when I was in college, I was sowing all the seeds by hand. Yeah. And one day I went and bought this. It was at the time it was like six thousand dollars or something yeah. like that. And but the place that ma manufactures this is in Ypsilanti. It's called Blackmore Seed or Blackmore Cedar. And basically, you fill this tray with soil, you put it in here, and these little needles take the seeds out of this tray no. and put one seed in every cell.
So I used to do that. By like, hand? Yes, yeah. and then and then when I had 12 misting tables instead of six, I would cover them with all these seat, sheets of trays. Mm -hmm. um, and then when they got big enough, they'd get transplanted. But then I started hiring out a lot of the seeding to a, play, a company called Rakers, yeah. which is about an hour and three quarters from here. So okay. they do all the common stuff for me and I still have to sow seeds for the weird things. Yeah. I've okay. seen ones that do like plugs and from tissue culture and things like that. Like in the Netherlands, it's so highly automated. You've mm. seen those machines that? Yeah. Oh yeah, those yeah, are cool. Like really sophisticated. I mean, <laughs> huge greenhouses with like no employees because yeah. yeah. everything is yeah. completely Auto automated. Yeah. It's insane. It's happening around yeah. here too. Yeah, is it? Yeah, machines yeah. that stick cuttings, machines yeah. that move the tray from one end of the greenhouse yeah. to the other, yeah. sticks it into the pot, yeah. grows it. Well, it's a huge investment though to, to invest in that all. This is the real bonsai area over here. This is where customers shop from. Okay. You know, cute little $50 plants, and then there's something like that that might be, you know, 3,000 or 4,000 oh or whatever. God. These are these are hardy bonsai. So okay. tropical bonsai are inside, the hardy bonsai are out here. So these are the ones that you have to keep outside because they're... In the winter time, yeah. they need to get a, a cold treatment, okay. some kind of a vernalization. Yeah. So we tell customers to leave them outside till around Christmas right. and then bring them into yeah. like a garage yeah. or something. Yeah. And uh, slowly acclimate them to spring. Everything behind you here is perennials. Yeah. To your left is perennials for sun, in alphabetical order by botanical name, A to Z. And then on the right is um, shade. And then over there you can see uh, heuchera and heucherilla and um, whoop, hostas. Oh, I love the smells of these. Oh, yeah. My God, yeah. it smells like a pixie stick or something. I don't know, like sugar and... So this is this is all kind of um, yes. Other than grasses, we're all you know. This is all kind of waning a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So the uh, fall crocus is in bloom. That's kind of a fun Ooh. one. Ooh. Huh. Oh, Do you and have that, a lot of spring like spring bulbs, bulbs in here. Yeah. No, it, okay. a few clusters of tulips yeah. and things like that. The hardy begonia. Yes. Is that a begonia grandis? Yes. Yeah. Grandis. Yeah. That came back from last year, that's just like good, it's supposed that's to. A good shade plant too, right? Yeah. It grows well. In yeah, this shade. is all. This yeah. is all shade here. And then your grasses. I'm really getting into grasses wow. now. I love the ones with the the coppery pink inflorescence. Yeah. Oh, look, look at all that grass. pollen. That's my favorite. Extra pink. The, the leaves come out at like a 90 degree angle instead of a more acute angle. I've just. It grows six, I've six just feet planted tall. a bunch of um, the. I got pink, red, and white mully grass. Do you know that one? Yeah. I don't know if it's hardy here. What's your, what's your zone up here? It's, uh, it's right on the edge here. We're five six. Okay, we're five six too. So yeah. I'm I'm hoping that it's starting to come up, mm -hmm. but I'm hoping we're like kind of yeah. you know enough in that because I, I think it's so beautiful. At least in pictures, I've never grown it, it myself. Really yeah. pretty, and people come in with that same internet picture yeah, and they ask yeah. us for it. Uh, the budley, of course, is in bloom right yeah. now. Coneflowers in bloom. Nephophia. The corabals are gorgeous this time of year. And over there, is, we call them second season annuals, annuals yeah. that we recommend for fall container combinations, yeah. most of which are frost tolerant, but not all of them. The ornamental peppers and celosia and things like that wouldn't tolerate a frost, but the calabrocoa, petunias, pansies, of course. And all, all the, we grow all these mums at the Shelby store, all the pansies at the Shelby store, the second season annuals at the Shelby store. Oh, and we grow all our own roses. Wow. We grow, yeah, we grow, we grow about 4,000 roses, and that's one of the 4, few things. 4,000 roses? That's one of the few things we grow at this facility. Okay. 
at over there in the north side. And then I'm assuming you specialize in like really co like cold hardy or what yeah. do you, we, yeah. Well, we, we're very partial to the Easy Elegance roses, which are okay. own root and super disease resistant, okay. but we also cater to the people that want, want the fragrance of the English roses. I see. So we have to do those too, the David Austin roses. And then we do the bread and butter, you know, knockouts and drifts and things like that. So this is what's left out of yeah. 4,000. Wow, incredible. And then you have some of the penicetums here. Mm -hmm. I think red these are, head. yeah, the redhead. We just, we just got more. some of, we just got some of those yeah. for our garden. Wow. Yeah. Those. Watch, because they'll, they'll get five feet tall. Yes, so. that's okay. It's a, it's a garden that could go three to five feet, so. This is where we do the um, tropical fruit, so okay. the citrus, olives, figs. So do these you do bring in? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. But there's a, there's a lot of people that got to have these things, and they, yeah. they're asking for goofy grape, grapefruit and goofy kumquats. This is a half-off area, so we probably don't want to go over there. <laughs> This is what's oh, left of the yeah. herbs. These are like a nice, are these nice oreganos? Yeah. Uh, they have so many beautiful yeah. ornamental yeah. oreganos. Yeah. yeah. Um, Kent Beauty is the. Kent Beauty is the popular one, yeah. But I just got one that's um, a crawler that's uh, round, like a rounder leaves, not, not Kent Beauty. And it just is more prostrate and I cannot remember the cultivar of it. You know that plant? I do, Didn't, don't they refer to it as a very, um, Hairy balls, yeah, hairy balls or, or yeah. gomphocarpus, yeah. <laughs> look, look, you don't see the flower too often, but caterpillars love this plant. I mean, this is, it looks like it's in the family of Apostanaceae, which is the same as Hoyas and yeah, milkweeds, yeah. right? Yeah, it's in the, Does it's it in the Asclepius family. Yeah, it's in the Asclepius, yeah. Yeah. Do you like that? <laughs> you do so much. I love how it just started from like a little seed. Yeah. yeah. As an 11-year-old boy who wanted to go to Greece. Literally yeah. and figuratively, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it manifested into this. And you're inspiring other 11-year-old boys and girls and others to, to do this too, which is like incredible. And that you've like really baked yourself into the, the landscape here in the community. Let us know what you thought of Telly's plant collection in the description below. And if you like tours like this, then give the episode a thumbs up. And we want to keep on creating educational, long-form botanical content. So if you don't mind, help us grow by hitting the subscribe and notifications button, which will also keep you up with the latest episodes. This year, we'll be donating 1% of our Google AdSense revenue to plant conservation, which is one of the ways that we're contributing to the plants that we love. And don't forget, we have a whole suite of online audiovisual houseplant courses to sharpen your skills. Everything from houseplant basics for those who are just starting on their houseplant journey to the houseplant masterclass, which has the 350 houseplant care spreadsheet and a wealth of content for you to dive into on houseplant maintenance, care, and more. You could find out about all of those offerings at homesteadbrooklyn.com. See you in the next episode.